Hello and welcome to Doc Please Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at organic analysis and we're going to be looking specifically at infrared spectroscopy. So what we want to be able to do by the end of today's lesson is have a good understanding and be able to use infrared spectra and the chemistry data sheet or booklet to identify particular bonds and hence functional groups and also identify impurities. So what is infrared spectra and well where does it come from? Well infrared spectra are the results from something called infrared spectroscopy. So infrared spectra is the graph that we get out from this experiment. And infrared spectroscopy is done by taking an infrared source of some sort, an infrared being uh, just a part of the uh, electromagnetic spectrum and it's a lower energy wavelength than light, visible light. The infrared source shines light at a detector. So our detector is on the other side and the detector measures the amount of infrared light that is received from the source. It measures that over a region and it measures a range of energies from about four, 400 to 600 wave numbers. So these are called CM minus 1 up to about 4,000 wave numbers. These are and a wave number is 1 over the wavelength of light. I'm not going to worry about that too much here, other than to point out that the higher the wave number, the higher the energy. Down to l lower wave number, lower energy. Now, if we don't put anything in the way here, we read across all of these wavelengths or wave numbers and we would measure that all of the infrared energy goes from the light source and gets to the detector on the other side. However, if we put a sample in between the source and the detector, the sample will absorb certain energies and it will absorb certain energies because the molecules or the bonds in the molecules absorb infrared IR energy and this causes them to vibrate. That absorption, when it's taken in, is then removed from our source and we then no longer get certain wavelengths at the detector depending on the specific bonds that we have in a molecule. What that means is we have a way of testing or analysing what bonds are in a molecule and therefore we can see which functional groups are in a molecule. And we'll see how now. So here is an example infrared spectra and on the right hand side here this is uh, table A from your AQA data sheet which you would get in the exam. What you can see down here is we have a series of wave numbers and their associated bonds. So those wave numbers will cause these bonds to vibrate. Here's an example spectra. You can see we've got the 100% line up here. So if there was no molecules in the way, we would simply get an infrared spectrum which went along the top. However, every time we get these peaks here, that is an absorption region, 
and that is due to the vibration of some bonds. We'll look at those specifically in a bit, and you can see there are quite a few. Here we have 1500 wave numbers. I'll point that bit out because above, and we go from right to left increasing, we can get useful information above 1500 wave numbers up to about 4000 wave numbers below 1500 wave numbers the information becomes a lot less easy to find out and this region here we call the fingerprint region The reason we call it the fingerprint region is we can't identify exactly what bonds these absorptions are related to. However, if we were to compare one molecule with a database of molecules, if we were to find that same molecule in our database, they would have the same fingerprint region. So it is a way of comparing molecules and double checking Let's say if I thought I had propanone, then I could compare the fingerprint region with another propanone molecule, and they would be the same. So now what we're going to go on and look at is specifically the region above 1500 centimetres to the minus one, and see if we can work out and see some example spectra with each of these absorptions. So we're going to look here above 1500 wave numbers and we're going to be identifying functional groups. Our key functional groups that we're going to be looking for can be summarized in this drawing here. We have at 1620 to 1680 centimeters minus one the wavelength we get our carbon carbon double bond indicating an alkene is present. The 1680 to 1750 wave numbers is our carbonyl C double bond O group. And that can be as a result of one of three possible things, either a ketone, an aldehyde, or potentially a carboxylic acid. Now, if we have a carboxylic acid present, we would also have this blue peak here which is an OH acid and that occurs at 2500 to 3000 wave numbers if we have a carboxylic acid we'd have that one present and the C double bond over here and the final one that we're going to look at is the OH from an alcohol so OH from an acid here OH from an alcohol here and that would occur at 3230 to 3550 Note here that both the blue and the red OH groups are quite broad. There's a C double bond O and the carbon-carbon bond are both quite sharp. And the carbon-carbon single bond is quite a small peak compared to the carbon double bond oxygen. So the first example here I'm going to take you to look at. Um, you can just have a quick look at this diagram. Just to say here... Those peaks here are generally due to carbon hydrogen absorptions and will be seen for most um, alkyl groups. This one here, remember, is our 1500. So below this side, we've got the fingerprint region. And so the only real note is this peak here. And that is occurring around about 1620 to 1680. And that is due to the carbon double bond carbon bond and this is actually the infrared spectra for hex 2 in. So a small sharp peak due to the carbon carbon double bond. This next one then I'll let you think about what this is just while I identify where the fingerprint region is again. So again this is only of any use if we can compare directly with a known sample. 
here we have carbon hydrogens once again and so the only peak from functional groups is this broad peak and that is at around about 3230 to 3550 wave numbers and that is due to the OH from an alcohol group notice this is always broad well, that's to do with a very fast proton transfer that occurs in alcohol groups with this actually coming from propan 1 all. this next one then again here's our fingerprint region so we can't identify the actual functional groups there and this time we've got two peaks now you might be able to see that the our peaks boom before is our CH groups are under here and there's now a broader peak overlapping it so there's sort of a multitude of peaks here which is a bit distorted because of the carbon hydrogens and this is actually now due to our OH from an acid because this is now occurring at about 2,500 to 3,000 wave numbers and we can check here that as well to go with that we also have our carbon double bond oxygen here at 1680 to 1750 wave numbers and so this is due to the carbon double bond oxygen OH from the carboxylic acid and is actually from the ethanoic acid of course we can't decipher that this is ethanoic acid we can only say that it's a carboxylic acid from the infrared so these final two I'm going to show you are different isomers and they are functional group isomers of each other if we have a look here they both have a very similar strong absorption peak and that occurs for both of them at about 1680 to 1750 wave numbers they both have a sign of carbon hydrogens as we've seen in all of these alkyl groups and that is because both of these do have the carbon up but this one at the bottom here is actually from propanol whereas this one at the top here is due to propanone so these two are indistinguishable as functional groups. Uh, we might be able to check with the fingerprint region below 1500 as to which was which. But we'd be able to tell which the fact that they were either an aldehyde or a ketone. And then you could do chemical tests such as tollens or failing reagents that we've seen in previous lessons to distinguish which was which. So that is the end of the session on infrared spectroscopy. The best thing to do will be to do plenty of practice looking at the spectrum and identifying those key functional groups. I'm just going to highlight to you again here as these really, let's bring that to the front so we can see, these really underpin all of the chemistry along with our functional group table and the absorption data that we get in the exam. So just to recap, you should now be able to use infrared spectra and the chemistry data sheet to identify particular bonds and functional groups and also identify impurities. Bye for now.